That's a wonderful word for the Lord, a wonderful word to the Lord, a wonderful word about our relationship with the Lord. Oh my goodness, that's what God wants us to open up our life and say to him, I trust is in you and I believe in you and I'm not going to be shaken because I put all of my confidence in you, every bit of it, because God is completely faithful to do everything that he said he would do for us in his word. His word is binding to him. Uh, he speaks it. Uh, we believe what he says by faith, and God then operates and functions within what he promises us in his word. You might notice, if you got the notes for today, that we're entering a new uh, series. And, you know, many of you are familiar because you're here all the time with the fact that I have to do things in series because I can't, you know, preach short messages for some reason. I've been, I've been trying for 43 years to preach short messages. And by short, I mean like, you know, 30 minutes. Uh, so you could kind of, you know, we get a little flow going in life, but uh, I find it very difficult to do that. But anyway, the point is, uh, how whatever the Lord wants to say, that's what I want the Lord to say. And, and I know this is going to take more than one time speaking with you because the principles that are, are the, actually laws, actually this is, these are not principles. You know what principles are, right? Principles are how you go about doing something. A principle would be how this works for you or within your context. There are many things, many principles that work in the United States of America that don't work in Africa or Europe or Asia or anywhere else. And there are some principles that work in Europe that don't work in America or Africa. There are some that work in Africa that don't work here. In other words, a principle is applied to whatever, the way you go about doing something wherever you are. A law, on the other hand, works the same. It's steadfast, and it doesn't matter where you are or who you are. It's going to work the same no matter what and no matter where. It's like the law of gravity, a natural law. The law of gravity says that if you're heavier than air, it doesn't matter whether you weigh 50 pounds or 500 pounds. If you step off of a high building, for example, you're going to splat on the ground. It doesn't matter whether you're in Africa or America or Europe or Asia or wherever you might be or what color your skin is. That is a law of God, and it's going to apply no matter what. Well, when I talk about these things are laws of God, then what I'm saying is that these things are going to happen this way every time it is immutable. It does not change with the climate or the culture or whatever, and that God will always do things in this way because this is what he says in his word about practicing certain things, and when you do it according to the way he says it, then he says, I'm going to do it. I'm going to respond in this way, and so you might see that today we're going to look at five laws. Actually, I hope to look at four today and then maybe the, 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 the last one next week. And let me just say this to you. It doesn't really matter the order of these five laws. They're not dependent on each other in law. These are just the five laws that the Bible gives us concerning living the blessed life. Now, how many of you would love to live a life that was blessed by God? Now, I, I, yeah, yeah, and those that didn't raise your hand, uh, I hope that by the end of the message that you'll say, shoot you, I want to live my, I want to live the blessed life. Well, most of the time when you use the phrase, the bless, a blessed life, people immediately think about money. That, you know, I, I, want to, I want to be blessed by God. But to be blessed, a blessed life may not even be talking about finances at all. It usually involves finances. But it's not just about having money or getting more money in life. The blessed life, blessed just seen in connection with what we're talking about here has to do with uh, assistance and protection from God. If I'm blessed, if I'm living a blessed life, it means I'm living a life that God is assisting me in living and God is protecting me as I live this life from the enemy that's trying to come against me and break my life and break the purpose of God in my life. If you're not living the blessed life, what that means is you're swimming against a stream. If you're, not, you're, 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 you're fighting against almost an invisible force that no matter how hard you try, you seem to be always going against the flow and life is hard and it's restrictive and you're fighting for every little inch 
that you can possibly get, and it's just hard, and it wears you down and wears you out, and nothing seems to just naturally work out in life. So when we talk about the blessed life, what we're talking about is living a life where God is your partner and God protects you and God blesses, God moves so that you're not swimming against a stream, but you're actually cooperating with what God created you for in the first place. How many of you believe that God created you, right? Yeah, God actually is, was in control when you were conceived in the womb of your mother and that when God put you into the womb of your mother, uh, he had a purpose for you. That he did, you're, you're not just an accidental uh, 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 combination of some egg and, and sperm fertilization process. You, that God does have a purpose for you in life. And, and if you can live according to that purpose then your life can go forward and be blessed and, and you, can, you, you can have great success in whatever that might be. And it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be some gigantic something like, you know, you're the head of some corporation or you're the president of the United States or you're a multimillionaire. I mean, it doesn't mean that God created every one of us to have that same calling or destiny in life. But whatever he's called you to, it means that you can be successful in whatever he's called you to. That is the blessed life. Now, I would love to have lots of money. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm just being real. I would love to have you know, <laughs> lots of money and, 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 and not have to worry about resources in life. But more importantly, I would love for that, those resources to come into a life that is blessed by God and, and, and God could uh, use me and move me and I could be blessed by God in that life. Well, in connection with that, I want to read a parable that Jesus spoke in Matthew 25. Now, the context of this parable, every parable that, God, that Jesus speaks or every parable that is given in the Word of God, no matter who speaks it, has a context. You know what context is? It means an environment in which it's spoken, and that means this is what the parable is really all about. Well, about half, to give you an idea of how important finances are in all of our lives, and how important finances are in the Word of God, about ha over half of the parables that Jesus spoke were about money and possessions and resources. Isn't that amazing? That in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that one out of every six verses has something to do with money or finances or resources. That tells you how important it was in, in, in our life. So the Bible is, is completely concerned about resources in our life. Life is concerned about resources, right? Because the, the statistics say that over half of the divorces that take place in this world today hate, take place because of money problems. That many times uh, depression, suicide, stress, and stress-related illnesses have to do with not having money in life. So life says that resources are really important. God says that money is really important because he talks so much about it because he knows we all need it and, and it's going to be a big deal and big issue in our life. But not all of the parables that talk about things that we would relate to resources have anything really to do with money. They have to do with anything in life. The context is, I'm just going to speak this parable, and this parable is not just about money. It's about anything that you want to put it to in life. It's a law. This is how God's going to do it. And that's what this parable in Matthew 25 is about. It's really about anything that you want to put it to. So let me just say that all five of the Laws of blessing are found in this one parable right here in Matthew 25. Let's read it out loud. Or I, no, let me read it out loud. I mean, let's look at it and I'm going to read it out loud. Huh? All right. For the kingdom of heaven is like... All right, the, all right, Jesus is saying, and I'm not going to stop between every verse, I promise. The, but I just wanted you to see that for the, for the... Jesus says, all right, guys, let me have your attention. For the kingdom of heaven is like... So Jesus is saying, hey, let me, let me tell you how the spiritual realm operates, is what he's saying. He's saying, look, you, you think that the physical realm of life is what life is really about, but I'm going to tell you that what really matters is what's going on in the spiritual realm of life. Because what goes on in the spiritual realm of life controls what happens in the physical realm of life and not vice versa. So he's saying, let me tell you what's going on in the spiritual world 
in uh, uh, concerning resources and life and blessing in life. So he says, all right, the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, another, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. Everybody say that last little phrase, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. And he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I've gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I've gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things, and I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you've not scattered seed. And I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there. There. You have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown. If you really believed that I was a person who reaped where they didn't sow and gather where I didn't scatter seed, if that's what you really believed, you say that's what you believed. If you really did believe that, you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and at my coming, I would have received back with my own interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has 10 talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even that that he has will be taken away. All right, five laws. Remember, not principles now. These are laws. These are, these are God's unchangeable laws, just, just like the law of gravity. And God says, this is what rules being blessed in life. If you obey these laws of God, he says your life is going to be blessed. In other words, he's going to enter into your life. He's going to be your partner in life. He's going to He's going to move you through life. He's going to be moving you and protecting you and assisting you as you move through life. And if you don't obey these laws, then you're not going to be blessed. It doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. God loves all of us. Look at your neighbor and say, God loves you. All right, God loves you in spite of, of whether you obey these laws or not. You don't have to obey these laws. You don't have to be blessed in life. You can have a relationship with God and go to heaven when you die without living a blessed life. But if you want to live a life that is blessed, these are the laws that will give you a blessed life. And your life will be blessed and assisted and protected by God as you move through life. This is what God says, I promise you, this is how it works with me. And if you will obey this law, just like it, it, you don't have to obey the law of gravity, right? But if you want to be happy in life, you have to obey the law of gravity, right? Because God says, all right, this is the law. And you say, I don't believe it. I don't care about it. <laughs> That's a bunch of junk, a bunch of hooey. They're always trying to take advantage of people and always telling us junky stuff so they can control our lives. That's what, and I mean, you can have all kind of negative thoughts about the law of gravity, but it's still the law. And if you, if you live with it, if you respect it, then you're going to not try to oh, break it. Now, if you try to break it, you know, you're on the second floor of a building. You say, that law of gravity is a bunch of junk, man. I don't do, you, know. you step out, uh, you go down, uh, you're not going to be happy with the results, right? 
I mean, it doesn't matter what you think about it. What you So if you want to be happy, you obey God's natural laws. If you want to be happy in the spirit realm and in the blessings of life, Jesus said, here are the laws. And if you live by them, you're going to be blessed in life. And if you don't, you're not going to be blessed in life. And it's your choice. And it's not a matter of whether God loves you or not. He loves us all in, in the same way and in the same matter. But if you want to live blessed, you got to obey these laws of God. All right, what are the laws of God? The first law is the law of ownership. The law of ownership just basically says that God owns everything. So as a Christian and a, and a believer in God, that means that my understanding of, of my life is that in my life as a Christian, I do not have the right to own anything in life because God owns everything in life. And I have to understand that he is the owner of everything in life. Look at these two verses. This is just two I picked out. There are bunches of them in the Word. Look at Psalm 24. The, the earth is the Lord's. All right, that means that this earth belongs to the Lord, right? So I don't own any of this earth. I don't care if I've got a, de a deed to some of it. I don't care if I've got my name engraved on some plaque set on somewhere. I can put a guard dog and change him up to the tree and protect some piece of property. But I don't own it because it says this earth belongs to God and all of its fullness and the world and those who dwell therein. Are you somebody that dwells within the world? Well, obviously you sure are. So what does it say? It says you belong to God. You don't have anything that is yours. It belongs to God. Look at this one in, in 1 Corinthians 6. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own, for you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. See, you don't even own yourself. You don't own your body because you're, it, it, one of these days you're going to be gone and your body's going to be left behind. Am I right about that? The last time I checked, there is a 100% mortality rate on this earth, right? Everybody that's ever lived on this earth has died, right? So we're very near, except, you know, Enoch and Elijah, who had some special exceptions of God whirling them away in a whirlwind and walking with God and we're not. Okay, that's the only two. Even Jesus died before he left this earth. We have a near 100% mortality rate. You're not going to leave here alive. You're going to be dead. And you're going to leave Whatever you worked in, your house is your body you lived. So in, in other words, you don't own your body. You don't even own your spirit. You don't own your soul. You don't own any of it. Because one of these days, your body's going to go back to the dust of the ground from whence it came. God created you out of the dust of the ground. And one of these days, you're going back to the dust of the ground. And the reality is that you're not going to take anything with you when you go back to the dust of the ground, right? I mean, I've never seen a hearse pull in the U-Haul, right? Have you? Do you know that the suit, if the suit that they bury you in or the jeans or whatever, that if it has pockets in it, you can fill your pockets up with whatever you want, but you're still not taking it with you. A hundred years from now, if they dig you up, they're, whoever digs you up are going to find what you have in your pocket because you, you're not taking it with you. So the law of ownership just says, basically, if you will remember where everything in your life comes from and who it belongs to, God will bless this in your life. So who are we responsible to? We're with our bodies, with our families, with the property. We're, we're responsible to God. And so this just means that I don't have the authority to do with my stuff what I want to do with my stuff because it's not my stuff. It belongs to God. So when I want to do something with God's stuff, I need to ask God because it doesn't belong to me. It belongs to God. God, your car's broke down. What are we going to do about that? God, I, I, I want to move, and this is your house, so uh, do you want me to move and go to another house? I mean, this is your property. What are we going to do with your property? 
Or God, you know, this is your, this is your child. Uh, what do we need to do with your child? In other words, I respect the fact that I don't own anything in life. And I know that flies in the face of every American. And I don't want you to be shocked and start squalling right now. But God is not an American. And God doesn't recognize our constitution and God does not recognize the laws of our country. God is the king of his own country. It's called the kingdom of God. And, and God bless America and I hope America lasts another thousand years or however long God wants it to last. But I can tell you about this, if this world lasts another trillion years, the kingdom of God will still be there when it's all over with. And God rules a kingdom of his own. And he says, all of the stuff and all of the possessions and everything you have in life does not belong to you. It belongs to me. So you don't have the right to determine what happens to your stuff in life. You ask me, look, don't just helter-skelter make decisions about what you're going to do with this property and what you're going to do with that property. God has, God, it belongs to God, so you respect that. So the first law is the law of ownership. It is the law of ownership. God owns everything in life. God has given me abilities, talents, life, strength, wisdom, knowledge. Where did all that come from? It comes from God. And so I recognize that and I respect that. And whenever I make decisions in life, I take it to the owner and get his permission about what I need to do in life because God owns everything. Here's the second law, the law of dominion. The law of dominion simply says, God has created me to rule over a domain in life. By domain, I mean a, a certain section or a certain place or a certain a skill or a certain talent. When God created me, he, he had a, a dominion. He had a domain in mind. Uh, do I have the next one? Yeah, here it is. This is what, when God created us in the, in the beginning, this is the verse that tells us this. Look at, look at this. Then God blessed them. This is Adam, Adam and Eve. When he created them, then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and, and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So in its original sense, God, when God put mankind, us, on the earth, God gave us dominion. He said, you rule over the birds and the animals and everything that moves on the earth. You're the king. You're the master of this kingdom that I'm giving you authority to rule over it. So know that you, you know, whatever you want to do, you make the decisions, and it's your domain in life, and I'm going to bless you. Now, man lost that dominion, you know, when we lost it, right? When we sinned against God. When we fell, God took dominion away from our life. So in the New Testament, when Jesus comes along, in, in, in the book of Galatians, it says that Jesus came and broke the curse that was on our life. What was the curse? The curse is we don't have dominion over things anymore. It said, cursed is him who hangs on a tree. Now, Jesus broke the curse where we lost dominion, and now it says he came and he was hung on a tree so that the blessings of Abraham may go to those who are not Jews and it can be restored on this earth. That's a long thing. It's really interesting, but I don't have time to get into all the details. But the fact is that that Jesus came and broke the curse and he gave us dominion. He made dominion a part of our life. And so he says, now you, I've given you and you now have dominion over these things. And in this parable, you remember when the, when the master came back, he looked at them and he said, all right, you, got, you had five. Whenever I came back, you gave me five more. And then he said, all right, you are blessed. And because you have been faithful over a few things, I'm going to make you ruler over many things. Everybody say, because you've been faithful over these few things, I'm going to give you dominion, rule over many things. All right, God says you've been faithful, so you've proven that you can rule over some things. 
I've looked and watched you and, 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 and I've seen you perform. And so now because you have performed good and, and you understand the law of dominion, I'm going to now be able to give you more things because I can trust you to use those things that I have given you wisely. So I'm going to give you many more things in life. Same thing with the guy that had two talents. He said the same thing to him. Because you have been faithful over a few things, I'm going to make you ruler over many things. And so Jesus says, because I've watched you and because you've proven to be real in life and you can manage a domain, I'm going to give you more in life. So the question then becomes, the question I ought to be asking God and the question I should be praying about in the area of a blessed life is, God, what is my dominion in life? What is it that you put me here on this earth in order to rule over or to have dominion over in life? And I know I, I can see like, oh, what could it be? Well, I mean, it could be lots of things. Business, education, ministry, the arts, government, uh, marriage, family, influence, wealth, athletics, uh, banking. Uh, I mean, it could be any area of, uh, of domination in life that God said, I put you here so you could have some, some dominance over and rule over this section of your life. Let me just give you one example. may help you understand it. Let's take from the world of business. How many of you have ever heard of the Kathy family? Heard of the Kathy family? If, I know you, you may not have heard their name before, but let me tell you what, who they are. They, they're the owners of Chick-fil-A. The Kathy family owns Chick-fil-A. Well, it wouldn't surprise you to find out that the Kathy family are great Christians, right? And that they, they do seminars for Christian values and so forth all over this country. They, they give many, many, many thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to Christian organizations and they teach conferences in Christianity. And you know, one of their major messages is about, is about your, your dominion. And they teach about dominion and what God has called you to and what you're to have dominion over in life. And, and what they teach about themselves is that, you know what their dominion is? Chickens. Chickens. Now, can you imagine how they got that message from the Lord? I mean, I'm just imagining, you know, I'm praying, Lord, what is it that you've given me dominion over? Lord, what is it that you want me to rule over in life? Come on, God, I, I need to know the direction because I know you've called me to something and I know you... I know there's something in life that, that, that I need to focus toward and move toward. And, and all of a sudden, the picture of a chicken pops into your brain. Now, imagine that. God, I need my, I need, what is it you called me for? Chicken. Wait, wait, all right, hang on, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Lord. I got to get this chicken out of my head. What, what about a chicken sitting up in my head? I'm thinking more like a bar of gold or a bag of, uh, I mean, a, or a barrel of oil. Uh, I mean, that's what I want to see up there. But I guess blooming chicken, you know, is right. And, 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 and out of that chicken, they have become multi-billionaire <laughs> multi -billionaire businesses on this earth. That little chicken brought a multi-billionaire enter, uh, enterprise in this country, and their lives have been blessed, and they've blessed others because they rule over the chicken business. It's what they were created for. What I want to say to you is that you were created for something and that God had something in mind. And when you find your dominion, and it doesn't have to be a, the chicken business and, and restaurants all over the place. It could be a household. It could be a, a, a farm. It could be an education. It could be a classroom. It could be a, a, a job. It could be, I mean, it could be anything that God has uh, created for you, and he says, this is your dominion. So I, I don't want you to just take advice about it. I want you to rule over this area of your life, and I'm going to bless you when you start to move in this area of life. With Keith, I think about the record business. I mean, you know, a pop record pops into his life. And, and, you know, and, and you other business guys, I mean, my goodness, God has a dominion, and he says, I want you to find that dominion, and I want you to rule in that dominion. Now, he says, if you do that, I'm going to bless you in life. For he says, you remember the last two verses here, he says, so take the talent from him who has, ten, who has, has one talent and give it to the guy with five talents, which is anti-Robin Hood, right? 
Robin Hood says, take from the rich and give to the poor. This says, take from the poor and give to the rich. <laughs> you know, the one that has five, he's going to get one more. And the one that has one, he gets his taken away and he doesn't have. And this is how the, the last verse puts it. For to everyone who has, it will be given. And to everyone who has not, even that which he has is going to be taken away. So here's the question, follow me. From everyone who has, who has what? To everyone who has, has what? Has the ability to take dominion and function properly with it. To everyone who is able to take dominion and rule over the kingdom they've been called for, I'm going to give them more and give them abundance but to those who have not the ability to take dominion and rule over their kingdom, even that which they have is going to be taken away from them. In other words, God says, I'm watching you. I'm watching you. Now, this is a tremendous point, so don't fade on this, all right? Hopefully, I can make it and pop up and move on. But God is saying, uh, if you have the ability to take dominion and rule over what I've given you and I'm watching you to see what you are doing with what I've given you. My eyes are on you to tell whether you have or you don't have this ability. And if you do have it, I'm watching you. And if you're taking care of what you have and using what you have properly, I'm going to give you more stuff in that life. If you're not, then I'm not going to give you more stuff. And the reason I'm saying this to you is that we have this tremendous ability to lie to ourselves and to tell ourselves, you know, the reason I don't take care of the stuff that I have is because my stuff is so crummy. And, you know, I really don't want to take care of my old crummy stuff because I really want my crummy stuff to go away. But I'm telling you what, if God would give me some better stuff, then I would take care of it better, right? Now, that's what we tell ourselves. But you know what God is saying? God is saying, if you got crummy stuff, take care of your crummy stuff, and I'll see you taking care of your crummy stuff, and I'll know you know about the law of dominion and the law of blessing, and I'll give you better stuff. You got a crummy old car? God, take care of that crummy old car and maintenance and serve it and wash it and wax it and keep it clean and, 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 and honor what you have. And God said, I'll give you a better car. You got, a, you got a broke down, nasty little house and it's, it's like a bread box and you're just saying, God, well, take care of that nasty little crummy thing and keep it clean and move it forward in life. And God said, I'll give you a, I'll give you a better house, a bigger house. You got a single wide trailer and you want a double wide, take care of the single wide and God will give you a double wide. You know, I mean, in other words, take care of what you have. And, and rule over it and take dominion over it. And God says, when I see you doing that, I'm going to bless your life with more abundance and, 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 and you're going to be blessed. If he's given you one gas station, take care of that gas station. He'll give you another gas station. You know, if God's given you a, an apple cart, take care of that apple cart. He'll, he'll give you another apple cart. He said, if you know how to use it and learn dominion, then I'm going to take care of you. All right, here's the third one and I'll hit it real quick, all right? The law of use. The law of use just simply says that if you'll use what God has given you, that God will give you more. And that you have to use what God has given you before God gives you more. And this comes from the part of the parable that says that there are two men in the parable that took what God gave them, invested it, and, God, and brought God back more then he gave them and he looked at them and he says, all right, you're blessed. There was only one guy who took what God gave him and dug a hole in the ground and hid it from the Lord. And when the Lord came back, he said, all right, here's your one that you gave me. And I did this because I was afraid. And so I hid it in the ground because I, I, I thought you, you know, might be upset if I lost it. So because I was afraid, uh, I, I put it in the ground, but here, here it is back, and I'm, I'm giving you back what you, what you gave me. And he said, what did he say? You wicked and lazy servant. If you really thought that about me, if that's what you really believe, that I, that I reaped where I haven't sown, 
and that I get crops from where I didn't make any kind of investment. If that's what you really thought about me, why didn't you just give my money to the bank so I could have at least gotten interest on it? So I'm taking away that little one thing from you and I'm giving it to the one that has five because he knows how to have dominion over his stuff. And you obviously don't. So if you want more blessing from the Lord, here's the, here's the law. Use what you have. God's not going to give you blessings in order for you to bury them in life. God does not provide things for you if you're going to bury them in life. And why would you bury things? Because you are afraid. You're fearful. Your attitude is, is dominated by, by anxiety about losing things in life and about fearing the master and fearing what he thinks. and In other words, you're afraid of God. You're, you, you don't use what you have. You store it and you don't, you don't put it into action because you have this belief that somehow God is something to be feared. And if you, if you lose something in life, God is, going to be, you know, God is going to be angry with you and he's not going to bless you in life. So the law of use just says, all right, if you want to get more from God, if you want more giftings, if you want more blessings, if you want more talents, if you want more opportunities, if you want more resources, whatever it is you want, you must use what God has given you before God is going to give you more. And put those gifts into operation because we're talking not about just money, but about all the giftings from God. Who gave you the talents that you have? Who gave you the abilities that you have? Who gave you the resources that you have? They all came from God. And God says, look, if you want more blessings, I gave you the blessing of being able to teach the word of God. Well, you're not going to be able to sit in the sanctuary while other people struggle to teach kids and teach youth and do all of that. And you got a blessing to teach and you sitting there in the sanctuary, never using that blessing, hiding it and digging it in the ground and expect me to give you more blessing in life. You get that blessing that I've already given you and use it and then I'll give you more. And that applies to everything that we have in life. Here's the last one. The law of, let me see, yeah, the law of faith. The law of faith. This law just says everything God does, God does by faith. And here's the verse, and I know you've heard it a bunch of times, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. Not highly unlikely. This verse doesn't say without faith, it's highly unlikely that you're going to please God. It says without faith, it is impossible. What does impossible mean? It means not possible, right? Without faith, it is not possible for you to please God. So whatever you do must be done in faith, right? Because that's the only way that will please God. Now, be careful because I'm trapping you, okay? <laughs> I'm telling you that. For without faith, it is impossible to please God, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and, and, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. What, what in the world is he talking about? Well, he's talking about the fact that the master gave two of these guys, one five and one four, and these guys had a belief about the master, right? Obviously, they, they, they believe that we have a good master, right? They, uh, our good master gave us a good gift, and if we will take our abilities and we will rule over what he's given us, and we will take authority over what he's given us, and we will invest what he has given us because he's a good master, and we can believe in him, and we can trust him, and we can trust him to do what he says he's going to do. So if we take what he's given us and invest it, that when, and it does good, when he comes back, he's going to bless us because he's a good master. That's what they thought about the master, evidently. The, good, the one guy who, who took it and put it in a hole, what did he say? He said, well, I, I, I knew that you were a hard man and I knew that you uh, reaped where you didn't sow and I knew that you uh, gathered crop where you didn't uh, have any seed, so I took mine and my hid it. So here's what he believed. God's a bad God. 
He, he, he's an angry God. He's a bitter God. He's a jealous God. Uh, I, I need to fear God. I'm going to put mine in a hole so that at least I have it when he comes back because God's unreasonable. God doesn't, God doesn't make wise choices and, he, and he's harsh in his judgment and that's what he believed about God. What does this verse say? It says it's impossible to please God if I don't have faith. For everyone who, for everyone who comes to God must believe that he is. He is, he is, what is that? That he is here, that he is involved, that he is present, that he's a good God, that he's, he loves us, that he's, he's working in our life. And if I believe that, it's going to affect the way I think about God, and the way I think about God is going to affect how I live with the resources in my life. They all belong to him, and then I've, I've, got, I've got to take dominion over what God has given me. I make choices about that, but it's his, his property, so I respect his ownership, and then I take authority over it, and I use it like God would have me to use it, and then I use everything that God has given me to use, because if I use everything that God has given me to use, God says he's going to give me more stuff. But i got to believe that when I do that, that, that God is going to bless my life. I've got to believe that God loves me, God knows me, God has a plan for my life, and that God is personally involved in my life. And if I will believe that, then God will honor that faith and I will please God in life. Four laws, there's one more, four laws concerning the blessings of God in our life. And I don't know about you, but I want to live a blessed life life with God. I'd love to have plenty of money, but I'd love for that, remote, that money or resources to come into a life that is blessed because living a blessed life is far more than having money. Am I right about this? Because I don't know about you, I know bunches and bunches and bunches of people that have lots of money, right? Matter of fact, the Super Bowl comes on today, I'll guarantee you, before the Super Bowl, you're going to get to see a bunch of little vignettes, little stories, little, you know, things about some of these players and some of this, and, and you're going to see money and riches and resources and opulence and everything else. But there are plenty of people that have lots of money that are miserable as they can be. They're not blessed in life. Their life is not happy. Their life's not moving forward. They lose everything whenever in a short period of time. I mean, their life is just, so don't ever conclude that having lots of money means I'm blessed in life. Because you can be miserable with a whole lot of stuff in life. You can cry a bunch of tears in mansions, right? So God has a blessing in our life. So how, how does God bless our life? See, you were created for something. You must believe this. Do you believe this? That God didn't just helter-skelter put you here for no reason? Why were you born where you were? Why is your family what it is? Why do you have the gifts that you have? What is your, why is your personality the way it is? Why has God given you interest in some things? Because God has called you to a, do, a domain in life. And that's right. That's right. You have a purpose. And I believe that you probably already know what your purpose is in life. You have a dream, right? It, it might be something big. It might be something, you know, it, that to you has been something that's been on the front of your mind and the thoughts of your mind. And you're going, man, God. I, and you've kind of held back from it and thought, I could never do that. I don't know. And God, it just keeps being there. And, and it's, it might be a big dream because you got a big God. And, and God says, this is, all right, please, come on, get in here with this. Because this is why I created you. This is your dominion. This is your purpose. And, you, and, and come on, get in and use what I've given you. And I'll give you more. And I'll take care. And I'll open the doors. And I'll move. And I'll bless you. And I'll protect you. And we'll go in this area. And will you believe me in this? I mean, I know it doesn't make sense always, but will you believe me in this? And God will take you forward because these are the laws of living a blessed life. So bow your head with me.